So we're in FreeCAD, we're in the part workbench, and we're going to be learning about this sketch attachment. Now, the part and the part design sketch attachments are the same. It's just easier to de demonstrate it actually in the part. So first of all, I need something to sketch. So I'm going to come into the sketcher and I'm going to create a new sketch. This is going to ask me for one of the planes. Now, these are the base planes. These are the global coordinate system planes. And we can see that they align with these planes over here of the global coordinate system on our handler. So I'm going to go for the YZ plane and hit OK. So you can see we've been spun around to the YZ. And if we look, the Y runs this way and the X runs this way, which is different to our global coordinate system because we're actually attached to the ZY plane. So if you think we're flat face along the ZY plane here or flat upon there, we're aligned with it. So the Z runs this way, normal to sketch. Because you can see the X runs this way and the Y runs this way. We'll understand that a bit better in a moment. Let's sketch a slanted face to show the flat face on a object. So I'm going to select these two points, make sure they're coincident, because I missed that. Coincident there. So we close geometry, and what we can do is come over to the part, and this is a sketch upon the YZ. So Z runs this way, so when I take the sketch and extrude it, we're extruding along, which is along the normal. So Z is the normal vector this way. To change that to something like 50, and we get this here. Got a number of faces on here. We map sketches to these faces by selecting on them. And whichever one we select on, it will map flat face as default to that face. So let's come over to the sketcher and show that before we start changing the map mode of that sketch. So let's pick this slanted face here. Pick that, create a sketch. So asking the selection of the map mode, which is flat face, and OK that. So that sketch now is laying. You can see how it's orientated. It's in line with that face. Let's look at the other axis. So you can see the axis runs there. And we've got that all line there. That means that the Y will run along this face and the X will run this way. But the Z is always normal to the face, which runs in and out. So if we add a sketch on here, like so, and hit close, the sketch is on that face. And if we look, we get the attachment of that sketch. And we get the support and the map mode. And let's bring this out a bit so we can see. So this is face one of the extrude and the support that this sketch is mapped to is that face. And the map mode is at the moment it's flat face. So if we take the placement and move that about using the position, you can see that it's not going to allow us to do it because it's read only. We need to do the attachment offset and the position. And this moves along the X and Y, like so. So this is flat face to here. Now you can see the Z runs out from that face. Let's zero these off and change the map mode. So we covered this in one of the videos regarding local and global coordinate systems, but we didn't go into the map modes. So I'm going to place this sketch normal to one of these lines, which means that the normal of the sketch will run across either this line or this line or these edges. That allows us to create different features upon there. So to do that, we first come over to the map mode of that sketch and click in here and use the button. Now we get the attachment properties come up. We can see the first one says extrude face one. Click this button so it says referencing and we can select a different edge face or vertex. That will change the map mode. So I'm gonna go along this edge here. 
you can see that the sketch is now over this way. Why is it over this way? Well, we haven't got any X, Y or Z offset. It's default into normal to edge. And you can see that normal to sketch is running this way, but it's out here. If we OK that and come into the sketch and double click it, you can see that the sketch has been aligned normal to that edge this way here, but the geometry is just over here. It's not centered. So let's center that geometry, that point, coincident. Now it's on there. Let's come into the model and look at that sketch. I've still got the sketch open. That allows me just to have the axis available. So I can demonstrate that the position now, if I move it along the Z, and it shows it normal to that edge, it runs along that edge like so. So it's always in line with that edge. That's zero that. So it's at that point. So it's gone to the beginning of that line. I'm just going to close that and come over to the part and just extrude that. Now let's see which way the extrude runs. So click on that sketch and extrude that. I'm going to extrude it along the normal, which means it'd be extruded in this way. And we do 20 millimeters and hit enter. So it's actually extruded the other way. So that's coming to that extrude sketch, this one here. This support is still extrude edge four and normal to edge. Let's come into the map mode. And this time we're going to select a different reference. So we can still keep the line. Let's cancel that and show that sketch pressing the space bar. So when I come into the map mode, we can actually see it. There we go. This time we're going to use a second reference. So I'm selecting. I'm going to use a vertex. So I'm going to select this vertex here. And we selected that vertex. Let's move the sketch to that vertex. So we can select vertexes as well. So I can select this one down here. And select normal to edge and it'll move it to that vertex. Or we select a different vertex here and make sure we've got normal to edge and it's moved it out to the top. If I OK that, the extrude is still over here, but you can see we've got a tick by the sketch, which means it needs to be refreshed. And that will move that back up where that sketch will be. So it needs recomputing. And though it's moved, it needs recomputing. That's this time use the sketch. Look at the support. We got a strewed edge four and vertex four. Let's come back into the map mode. And this time we're going to pick the vertex as down here. So what we've done is use a strewed edge four and we've positioned it on that vertex. I'm going to select a second reference and I'm going to pick the other vertex. And we've got inertia two free there. Let's hit OK and see what's happened. You can see the sketch has failed. We've got this exclamation mark, which means that's incompatible. So we can't do that with the sketch. We get this exclamation mark. And also we got the error message that appeared there as well. So what we'll do is come into the map mode. And you can see this error message here. So when you get an exclamation mark, that means your sketch is in error for some reason. To clear that, we just delete that out. And now we've gone back to our line and vertex and I can pick normal to edge again. Now we can clear these out and pick something different. So they all now have no reference. So I select the reference at the top and we can just pick the vertex and that will go to translate origin. So what that's done is this sketch was at the origin here and it's just translated to the new origin. Let's delete that and select a different vertex. Let's select this one over here. 
and it's kept the same orientation, but the origin is just translated. Translate origin is good for when you're using something like loss. So for instance, if I cancel out of here and just delete these, and we'll create a sketch over in the sketcher. New sketch, X, Y plane, that's fine. I'm going to create a polyline. So we're going to use the create a polyline and I'm going to create a number of points. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I want these points that you see along here. Now we can do this actually with points. We don't have to create this polyline. So what I'm looking for is a line like this. And what I can do is take this line and create a sketch bond here. So I'm going to select the line and create a new sketch. It's going to ask me how I want to place it normal to edge. So what will that do? It will create a sketch that's normal to the edge. The Z will be pointing along that edge. So this will flip around. So we're looking across this line. So we're orientated along the YZ plane and I can create my sketch and close. Now this is orientated. What I can do is actually come into here, support. I can clear this out. Okay. And we'll clear this as well as deactivated. This hasn't moved. We didn't have to do this. We're going to refresh that. So it wanted recomputing control R or edit, refresh. But we can see how that's orientated in 3D space. This is just the rotation and the axis of this sketch. So we look at the data for that sketch and the placement, we can see we've got an angle and an axis. So that's orientated this way around. Let's create another sketch. And what I'm gonna do is create a sketch, this time along the ZX plane. So okay that, that way. So you can see that's orientated around this way now. And I'm gonna create, let's create something different. Let's create a centered rectangle. So we'll go in here and center this, this way. So we've got two sketches. Each one is orientated upon different planes. So the initialized placed upon the planes. So XZ this way and YZ this way. Now let's hide this one and watch what happens when we use translate origin. So I'm going to select the sketch. So that's coming to this map mode. And I'm going to select, say so selecting, and I'm going to select this vertex here. And we got the translate origin. So it's moved across these vertexes, like so. I've got a second vertex there. That means it's placed it in the middle of those two. So let's clear that out. It's going to head of ourselves. So we're looking at this vertex and this moves and it's translating the origin of the sketch. That's why it's got translate origin here. So make sure we're selecting and this one. So it's moving up and down these vertices. Let's do that with our other one as well. And we can see how that this is orientated this way. So if we come into the map mode and to translate origin with that one, so selecting and using the vertex, it keeps orientated in the same way. It's just translating the origin of the sketch. So we're moving along these vertices with translate origin. Let's okay that. So the attachment really helps us when we come to actually placing the sketches. For instance, that's going to the part and create a cube. I want to take a section of this corner off, but I don't want to just take this corner and say, do a chamfer on that. And we'll increase this to something like two mil and okay that. I've got to pick the edges. 
So let's pick these edges and OK that. You can see that I've got this corner removed, but I don't want to do this. I don't want these edges like so. And also I want this corner not to be at this exact angle. I want different angles on the side. So I want to take a slice through this corner, but something like this. This is where the sketch placement comes in handy. Sketch attachment comes in handy, sorry, not placement. So if I come over to the sketcher and create a sketch along this face, so new sketch along here, flat face along here, this is a scaffolding sketch. Not a construction sketch, I'm using this as scaffolding. So I'm going to place a line here. And what I can do is use this line and this axis and place this at an angle, so at 30 degrees. And then I can do the same on the other side and create a sketch, flat face, another angle on here. And we'll do the same, place an angle along here. And this one, let's say we'll do this one at 40 degrees. So if you take a cross section across here, we can cut this point off. So we need to place a sketch along these two lines. So let's do that. So let's create a new sketch. What I'm going to do first is just create a sketch along the XZ plane. XZ, okay. And we'll create just a rectangle. Not the centered one, let's go for a normal rectangle. Like so. And this is just to get ourselves positioned. So this gives us something to look at when we got the sketch. So the sketch at the moment is along the XZ plane. It's not flat on that face because we haven't attached it to the face. It's just flat along the XZ plane. So let's come into that sketch and look at the support. It has no support in there. So let's go to the map mode. And this time that's select this point. And then this point. So we've got those three. And then I select this point down here and look how that's been aligned. So it's now selected the top vertex of sketch 001 and we selected the box vertex, this point here, which would be one of these points of the sketch as well. We could use those. So you can see how that's aligned with those. That's okay that and come into that sketch. And let's have a look to see what's happened. So you can see, to bring this out, that that sketch lays along that line. And you can see the axes are slicing right through that. Let's close that. And you can see those there. So if I took that sketch over in the part and create a face against that, so part come down to the make face from wires you can see how that's cutting through there and I can split that off from this box select in the box select in the face and come up to part split slice apart so we've got two slices in here and we look at the exploded slice we've got slice zero and slice one if you press the space bar you can see how that's sliced through there so we've used the reference of this V and an angle to control this slicing. At any time I can come back into the sketch and change the angle, say 80 degrees, and close that, and we get the slice at those angles. So we're using the sketches as scaffolding the attachment of those sketches to that scaffolding to position this at the correct angle to create that slice. And that's the same in part design. So let's get rid of all these. So 
delete the slice, delete the face. And what I'm going to do is just jump into the part design. Create a body and that's come in. And what I'll do is just start from fresh. We'll get rid of the cube as well. So we just create a body. I was going to drop those in as the base feature, but that is not really showing the part design workflow. So the body's there. We've got the origin. If we press the space bar, we see all the planes of that body. And we're attaching to these planes now. So I'm going to create a sketch. Sure enough, it's selected. Create a sketch along the YZ plane. So this one here, you can see it highlighted. OK. That sketch is flat face to the YZ. And we can see that by coming to the model, looking at the sketch, flat face to the YZ plane. So if I create a sketch on here, we're flat face to that. and close. So we can see the YZ plane there. And that's high, the other plane is highlighted and press the space bar. You can see the YZ plane there. Padding will pad away from that plane along the Z axis. So normal Z axis, sketch normal. So we've gone that way. And then we attach sketches to here like so and again using let's take this line here so I'm taking this point we can bring in the geometry if our sketch point isn't actually aligned properly so I want the geometry of this point here there we go and we can attach that to here these two points and we can use this line to do our angle with so this is how you would set it up with this one if you can't get to this center point and these axes to do the angle so 30 degrees so we've got that one there we can do the same on this side we can use, even use datum lines if we want but let's create another one pull in this point And create the line. Not worried about the angle for this one. Now make sure nothing's selected and we'll create a sketch. It will place us upon a plane. It'll ask us for a plane first, so that's absolutely fine. We just select one. So we can select the one, this one here. And might place us around the wrong way. We can do a section view through here. View section. Draw our rectangle, close that. Now we've got the rectangle in place. And now I can position this rectangle using the sketch. Coming down to the map mode. The moment that supports the XY plane. Let's click on that and use the first button. Make sure it's saying select in and pick a vertex. Reference to. Make sure it's saying selecting by clicking on it. Next one and reference free. Click on that, selecting and select the bottom vertex. That's aligned with those now. So I can OK that. So you can see how that sketch is aligned across there. And it's going straight through that there. So I can take that sketch. I can do a pocket. It will disappear because it will create multiple solids. If I hit OK, it's saying solve multiple solids. And if I select through all, what it's doing, it's pocketing this way. So it's taken the rectangle and it's removed material by pocketing it out this way. If I hit OK, you can see that we've got that face there. And at any time we can come in and change our constraint for the angle. So 50 degrees and close that. And if we look at the pocket and look at the rectangle, we can see the reason why 
we've got this edge here because we haven't extended this out. So that is a quick demonstration and introduction to the attachment and how to use the attachment in both the part and part design. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.